a city of the late Bronze Age was now revealed. Kaufman believes it was a sizable city, with a population of between four and eight thousand. For the scientist not interested in the myth, it was an amazing breakthrough. Now, the people who believe that there was a Homeric Troy, that means a city of substantial size and population, will be happy with this result. The discovery of such a lower city is, is crucial. And the fact that Korfman has apparently discovered just such a lower town uh, is, uh, is wonderful. It's, it may be what was necessary to put the finishing touches on the identification of this site as Troy. After 3,000 years, the legendary city of Troy seemed to have become a reality. It seemed there was some historical truth in the myth. But there was still no evidence that Troy had been destroyed, as Homer said, by an enemy army. Then Kaufman's team began to look for clues about the fate of Troy in the late Bronze Age. Soon they began to find evidence of violence. They began to uncover arrowheads in the lower city. It suggested close quarter fighting. Kaufman began to build up a picture of what had happened. Now the evidence is burning and a catastrophe with fire. Then there are skeletons. We found, for example, a girl, I think 16, 17 years old, half buried. Uh, the feet were burned uh, by fire. Half of the corpse was underground. This is strange. So a rapid burial was in uh, a public space inside the city. And we found uh, sling pellets in heaps. He believes these pellets had been assembled by the defenders of Troy and then abandoned after they lost the battle. It pointed to a clear conclusion. It was a city which was besieged. It was a city which was defended, which protected itself. They lost uh, the war um, and obviously they were defeated. Kaufman had shown that Troy had been destroyed in a battle at the end of the Bronze Age, just as the legend had said it was. But there was one thing Kaufman couldn't determine, who the attackers had been. That evidence would have to come from elsewhere. Homer said that the army that sacked Troy came from Greece that it was led by the king of Mycenae, Agamemnon. And this whole era in Greek history has become known as Mycenaean. In the legend, a thousand Mycenaean ships sail for Troy to bring Helen home. besieges Troy for 10 years. But were the Greeks capable of mounting such an expedition together? And could it have been led by a king of Mycenae, like Agamemnon? These magnificent lions have guarded the palace at Mycenae for 3,000 years. In the late Bronze Age, Greece was carved up into independent kingdoms. Each ruler had his own palace. The mighty wall suggested this was the palace of an important king. 
But for the myth to have substance, this one had to be the most important of all. Home to the Greek king of kings. Professor Spiros Yakovides has spent most of his career excavating Mycenae. He's part of a team that have just completed a groundbreaking study. An atlas that shows what Mycenae looked like during the Bronze Age, including the road system that linked it to the rest of the country. We have the citadel of Mycenae here. This is the modern road, which goes up the black one, and these are the remains of ancient, of Mycenaean roads, these red things here. We have another road there, goes across the, the riverbed. This one, it makes a turn and goes uh, east. The roads uh, lead to all directions. He believes that the road network that radiates out from the citadel suggests that Mycenae could have been at the political center of the Greek world. It was the center of Mycenaean civilization. Therefore, we assume that it was also the political center of, My of, Mycenaean, of the Mycenaean states. And it was certainly uh, one of the most powerful states. So it could very well have been in the middle of things, in the center of whatever expedition was mounted against the coast of Asia Minor and therefore also against Troy. His work implies that Homer may have been right when he said Mycenae was at the center of Greek power. But was there evidence that these were the mighty warriors described in the legend? Evidence that the Mycenaeans were indeed great warriors came when these graves within the citadel walls were excavated many years ago. It was on this very spot here, in this circle of graves within the citadel walls of Mycenae, that the discovery of the lost civilization of the Mycenaeans was first made. Um, we're standing here in a great circle of graves surrounded by massive slabs of stone with the um, retaining wall of the great ramp that leads up to the Mycenaean palace behind us. Here were uncovered the rulers of this lost civilization. The men were found lying um, wearing massive gold death masks and wonderful ceremonial armor. It was a sensational discovery. For the first time, the world looked at the face of a Mycenaean warrior chief. This is a face from the late Bronze Age. Buried alongside it, weapons of war. We find Mycenaean warriors sometimes buried with up to as many as 40 or 50 swords that they probably collected and used during their lifetime. There's a whole sort of military strength and a military feeling to the civilization of the Mycenaeans. So from the artifacts we can see it's very much a warrior culture. This warrior culture that archaeology had revealed did seem to fit the warrior culture that Homer described in his story. But even so, there was nothing to link these great warriors to Troy. The myth says the Greeks sailed to Troy to win Helen back. That it was a war of